Take your girlfriends to a stand-up show. There's three sets of fucking dick. That's what she's going to see is three male comics <laughs> 85% of the times. Every once in a while, they might put a woman in there. You know, there's a woman comic on the schedule. But no, I think I'm exaggerating. I say 70% of the times. It's three dicks. So a woman has to put up with a, a, an hour and a half of listening to a male's fucking perspective. Put a woman in the middle. Now the women will have a great time. That's why I always use Kate Quigley to open for me, or Chelsea Skidmore, or Carmen Morales. I like those women in front of me because it gives the audience, it gives the women in the show something. They're not going to go there and get stuck with fucking fat man Joey Diaz for 40 minutes talking about eating your ass and spitting pubic hairs in your eyes and all that shit. They can only take so much of that. So you got to put a woman in there. Now let me tell you something. If that woman is funny, like Kate was, like Carmen Morales was, like Chelsea Skidmore was, you better watch them. I see a lot of male comics that a woman goes up in front of them and they're like, ah, no problem, I'll just pay attention or I'll just play pay PlayStation 5, whatever the fuck comics do. When a woman goes up before me, guys, I watch that woman. I watch her like she was naked. I watch her like she was fucking naked. Because women are deadly up on stage. If they get a cyclone going, you're dead. And I've seen it before. I've seen Beaumont Bacon blow people off the fucking stage years ago. There was a comic. There was a fucking dud comic, I remember. No name. <laughs> dud. He's a fucking dud, this guy. Dudley. And I remember one time I was doing shows in San Diego. And he was working La Jolla. And I stopped in La Jolla to say hello, to see how the show was going. I wasn't looking for a guest or nothing. I just stopped in. I knew him. I knew Beaumont Bacon. And I just wanted to say hello. And he came out first and was talking to me. And he goes, yeah, I got these two shows. Fucking Beaumont thinks she's going to headline. you know." And I looked at him and I sat and listened for like 10 minutes. And I tried to let his ego off as lightly as I can. I said, dog, this is Joey Diaz's thing. And I said, why don't you let her headline the first show and you headline the second show? I'm giving him an out so he wouldn't need a bag of dicks up on stage because I knew Beaumont Bacon was going to fuck those people up and La Jolla is always couples. You get to learn these little nuances as you do comedy. Some clubs you go to and it's 60-40. It's male 60, 40% females. La Jolla on Saturday is a date club. So if there's 200 people in there, there's 100 women in there. Are you with me here so far? So when I went in there, I just went to talk to him to say hello. He's telling me how he's the best comic in the world that he could follow anybody, and I'm trying to let him off the ledge and be smart and go, because even if, even if it was me, even if it was Joey Diaz, I would have let Beaumont Bacon open up the first show. Even though I knew I could follow her, I would have let her open up the second show so she wouldn't fucking destroy me the second show. Because the second show, they're a little drunker, and the early show of parents and old people and people don't want to hear bad words and shit like that. <laughs> so you go to the early show. 10.30 shows, I'm the king of 10.30 shows. That's when guys like me go on stage and I could go up there and talk about eating assholes and spitting out hemorrhoid juice and whatever the oh. fuck I talk about. You know, I'm just talking here. I'm just talking here. I mean, so what you do is that's the psychology that I'll go up for the second show and rip them apart. Well, when I pulled him aside like a man and as a friend, I said to him, yo, let her open up the second show, and you close the second show. And he's like, "Not in a million years, fuck her. I'm gonna, she's, I'm gonna follow her with no problem." So guess what I did? Against my best wishes, I got a bottle of water, and I said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna miss the coke dealer at ten thirty, but I'm gonna get more entertainment from watching him die a slow death." I just knew it. I just fucking knew it. It doesn't take a genius. And if you don't know it as a comic, remember last week I was talking to you about checking yourself? This is part of checking yourself. It's not that you're being a coward. It's nothing like that in comedy. It's that you're trying to stack the odds in your favor. 
That's all I'm trying to do. You want to stack the odds in your favor as a comic, as a human being, as a car salesman, as a guitar player. You always want to, do you, you follow me? So it's like if, if you think Aerosmith comes out with Dream On when they open up, <laughs> where would they go? Where the fuck would they go? The they came up. out with Dream On, Dream On. Well, what are we going to Dream On to next? What are we going on to next? And I'm exaggerating. Aerosmith's got a great catalog. <laughs> But what I'm trying to say to you is you don't come out with your with your best fucking material. So I'm sitting there that night, and, I'm, and I just sat there. Listen, and no, look, for years I always said I could make it home from La Jolla to L.A. in an hour 25. People are like, you're lying, you're lying. When you're addicted to coke, you'll make it an hour 25. I could make, I could, I would do 100 from La Jolla to the immigration center. I would slow down till 90. And then once I went through and they asked you, do you have any oranges or apples? I would say, no, I don't have any oranges or apples. And they would say, go on through. And I would do 100 to Irvine. <laughs> and once I got to Irvine, I would slow it down to like 90. And once I saw 18 miles out of L.A., it went back up to 100. And I would get to my fucking drug dealer's house in time on this particular night. <laughs> I said, fuck it. I was going to meet the drug dealer like at 10. I called him back. I said, I'll be up there at 1130. I got to watch this massacre. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, I'll tell you when I get there. I <laughs> sat there and I watched this fucking Beaumont Bacon wipe up the floor with this kid. Wipe up the floor with this kid. And then I did what a good comic would do. Like I tell Mikey, don't talk. Watch. Keep your eye on that comic. I wanted to see how he would react when he came off the stage. That's the money right there. <laughs> so when he came out, I went up to him, bro, I got to go. Great set. You know, I knew he ate a bag of dicks. I knew he, you could see it on his face. He was flustered. He didn't know what to do. And he came up to me. I shook his hand and I didn't say a word. And he looked at me and he goes, I think you're right. Maybe I'll let Beaumont close the second show. <laughs> I tried to tell you. I tried to save you five. I didn't say that to him. Yeah. I thought about that in the car because I'm not in business to fucking squash somebody's dreams. I was just trying to work with him from the right spot here. Just explain to him, listen, bro, just sometimes as a comic, sometimes as a human being, sometimes as anything, you got to see things for what the fuck they are. So... With all that said, like, when you do dirty material or whatever, I mean, I love Tony. I have nothing against Tony. This is going to blow over. This will be gone in six months. Thank God Ari released the video footage of what happened before and what after. It doesn't sting that much. 